We're with the St. Boniface Street Links outreach team, getting a deeper understanding of homelessness and substance use in Winnipeg. The first stop, this hotel. Good morning. They're checking on Street Links clients. Michelle Wesley is part of the team. So we're signing in. Street Links has 16 rooms reserved for people to stay. The outreach workers find out what people need, whether it's a ride to an addictions medicine clinic, housing, even filling out forms for ID. Good morning. I was going into encampments, uh, meeting with people, building trusts. Started realizing that uh, housing uh, was really something that we needed to focus on here. So that was something for the last year and a half I can actually say that I've been really focusing on is building trusts and getting people housed. Hi Charles, how are you this morning? I have CBC News following me today and they're outside the door here right now. It's here we meet Monica Davidson. She wants to talk. Well, can I talk to the news people? Davidson has been at the hotel since January. This is Monica. Hey there. Hi. How are you? I am not doing very good today. No. I've had better days. At one time, she says she was sleeping in a tent in a park. She tells us she was introduced to fentanyl three years ago. I beg you, do not ever, ever try that drug because all it's going to do is it can turn everything that you have in your life that's good into something bad and ugly. We have, um, you know, a, a good handfuls of people that are addicted to fentanyl. And, um, you know, we've had a, a few that, um, fortunately, we've lost. Davidson describes a life before the drug. I took my daughter to hockey. I, I played with my son all day. I cleaned my house. I, I, I just did regular things that, that a normal single parent would do. She says her children are doing well and living with her ex-husband. Wesley has taken Davidson to one of Winnipeg's two rapid access to addictions medicine clinics, known as RAM clinics. The walk-in clinics operate on a first-come, first-served basis. Davidson says she's waited in line to get in. When we go there, they make us stand outside. And you have to be there early enough to be the first one in line, or else you, the chances of you being seen by a doctor are slim to none. But the last time I was ready to walk away, and if Michelle hadn't grabbed me, should I leave the forceful part out? <laughs> no, it's never forceful. <laughs> With lots of love and hugs, though. Yeah. <laughs> It was done from a good place. Officials say Winnipeg Ram clinics fill up fast and people are turned away. They're not open on the weekends. Wesley says the limited hours they're open is a barrier. I'm pretty stubborn when it comes to Ram clinic. <laughs> you know, I don't like to leave without getting my client in because that's life or death to me, right? And uh, I care about each and every one of them. And um, okay. it's really hard when I can't get them in and, and I see the pain and, and um, how they're losing hope. That's really hard for me, especially as a recovering addict, is to watch somebody slowly slip away and start to lose that hope, right? When I'm there trying to build them up. The outreach workers meet people in bus shelters and camps. No one is here, but they leave harm reduction kits just in case. Some clean needles, along with clean water. <laughs> we meet Claudemir Bigotty at the Street Links office. He's here to bring by a piece of his art and pick up mail. What do you think led to you being homeless? Giving up, just giving up. Bigity credits Street Links for helping him get into the home he's in now. He still visits friends and lets them know if they need ID, income supports, or housing, there's organizations to help. I owe to myself. I owe to myself to let these guys know that, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I was in your shoes and uh, you, could, you, you could put better ones on, you know. He says addiction has played a role in his homelessness over the years. I'm trying to do it, please. Marion Willis is the executive director of Street Links. She says there's a drug crisis that's not being acknowledged to the extent it should be. We mm -hmm. agree that there's lots of people deep in addiction. We agree that we have a high overdose rate. And we talk about harm reduction and all of that. The biggest and first and most critical aspect of any harm reduction plan is going to be to acknowledge that you actually have a crisis, right? And then 
change the dial and the conversation to focus on that crisis and get all the right people at the table to think about what you need to do about that crisis. And it can't be the same old people at the table. Part of what she wants to see, more community-based recovery programs that support people long term. Wesley agrees. You know, um, and not having to battle all the time. It's like, it's like jumping uh, hoops to get into a recovery centre. You heard Wesley talk about RAM clinics. Well, Sherrod Health says there are plans to expand hours at one Winnipeg location. And another RAM clinic is set to open in the city in the Aboriginal Health and Wellness Centre at the end of May. Alana Cole, CBC News, Winnipeg.